Well, a bit of an interesting story coming out of Syria yesterday. Uh, apparently, uh, the Turks and their friends, the Free Syrian Army, uh, fired on uh, some uh, troops uh, that they apparently took to be their enemies, uh, people that they wanted to expel from northern Syria. Uh, you know, and you might be thinking, oh, well, this must be, you know, the SDF, uh, namely uh, the YPG, you know, the, the Kurdish forces and their allies uh, who have, uh, you know, sort of been getting pushed out um, and sort of agreeing to leave uh, this so-called safe zone in northern Syria. Um, but in actuality, that apparently doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, it seems as though in this case... Uh, the Turks and the FSA ambushed uh, members of the, the uh, Syrian Arab Army, not the Syrian Democratic Forces. In other words, uh, Erdogan uh, and his troops attacked uh, Assad's troops directly, and apparently uh, the Syrians suffered uh, you know, uh, quite a few casualties. And so this is a very significant event because we have one state military uh, that has just attacked another state military and, uh, you know, has uh, killed some people apparently. Now that's normally not something that just gets swept under the rug. That is, you know, what most people would consider to be an act of war. But uh, there doesn't seem to be much coverage of this event going on. Uh, and that makes me think that it will in actually be swept under the rug and that it, you know, it won't spiral into some kind of war between uh, you know, Assad and Erdogan. Because as of right now, the only outlet uh, that's uh, reporting directly, or I guess um, not directly, I guess that, that has a, a primary source on this, the only primary source that we have, uh, comes from you know, Syrian state television. Uh, which, of course, is you know a mouthpiece of the Assad government. That's how state media works. So the only person who seems to be acknowledging this right now is Assad. Erdogan has not acknowledged it. Um, other, uh, well, I guess other media organizations probably um, don't wouldn't have enough of a presence in this you know in the safe zone, uh, considering that it's you know it's still kind of a war zone, active war zone, um, and the, the, you know the the Western media at the very least is not um, friendly with either Erdogan or Assad, so they wouldn't really have a, a way of getting in there. Now, obviously, if confirmed and widely reported, this would end up being a very big deal. Uh, you know, it's not every day that we see, uh, you know, two state militaries engaged in combat, uh, you know, without there being an actual war going on. And even still, uh, wars between states are exceedingly rare these days. And it's particularly awkward in this case since the, uh, you know, the Assad government and the Turks and the Russians are all supposed to be working together to patrol uh, this so-called safe zone in northern Syria. Uh, the, uh, the Russians and the Syrians are trying to play nice with the Turks uh, to make sure that the Turks don't escalate things any further, uh, even though I, I think it's pretty clear that they have every intention of kicking the Turks out uh, at the uh, first available opportunity. But for now, they're appeasing the Turks because the Turks already are – you know, set foot on Syrian soil, and you know they don't want to get involved in a war and just pushing them out. They want to try and negotiate with the Turks and get them to leave voluntarily. This nice, nice ceasefire that they've uh, you know put together, though, and this you know little uh, short-term friendship that they've worked out uh, can't hold if the Turks, uh, it turns out, are you know killing Syrian soldiers that they're supposed to be working with. Uh, you know, you can't ally with people who are killing you. Quite obviously, um, so it, it, I do find it interesting that uh, if this, if the intention was that, well, let's say this was an accident, and that the Turks thought that these were Kurds or something, and they didn't mean to kill the, you know, Assad's people. Uh, if that were the case, they would try and sweep this under the rug entirely, and so I don't know why Syrian state media would even report on this. You would think that they would try and cover it up, and and you know, if they didn't want to escalate the war. But, you know, if, if the state media is reporting this, it tells me that the Assad government is, you know, pretty upset with the Turks and they actually want people to know about this. Nevertheless, I still think it's a huge stretch to think that, you know, they're going to try and, uh, you know, retaliate militarily and, and, and escalate this anymore. It's just that, you know, that wouldn't be feasible. But at the same time, you know, escalating in terms of rhetoric is very dangerous when you've got your troops already right next to each other. You know, I'm not seeing this really reported uh, in too many places. You know, antiwar.com had it, uh, but, you know, they kind of have everything about the Middle East. 
excuse me, I kind of I kind of started to cough there mid sentence. Uh, I certainly uh, am not surprised, however, that uh, uh, getting back to topic that uh, that the Russians are not acknowledging this because the Russians, uh, Putin, you know, kind of set this whole situation up pretty well in his favor. At least he was able to steer things uh, to make him look like you know the big peacemaker after uh, the U.S. left and then the media slammed Trump and then Putin was able to come in and say no 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 I'm going to clean up Trump's mess and that's sort of the narrative that he's been able to construct for himself. Uh, this, however, you know, if it, if it was coming out, if it came out that the Turks and, and, and Assad were fighting, uh, that, that wouldn't look good for Putin at all. So it may be the case that, you know, maybe Assad is, is, is a, a bit upset about this, but uh, – and Putin's not backing him up. In which case, that is, a, again, uh, another indication that uh, further escalation, uh, you know, based on, on this action uh, probably won't occur. You know, Assad uh, has made it this far uh, in the war with, you know, while surviving and, and maintaining his, his hold on power. He's not going to do anything stupid at, like, you know, uh, launch a counterattack against the Kurds uh, without, you know, Putin's backing. And so hopefully we'll get some more information on this. But for now, uh, I, I think that's about it. I, I don't have a ton uh, you know, to say on this because we don't have a lot of information. Uh, but I do think that it's important to point it out because it, it is uh, you know, a very significant event, even if it's not being covered widely um, you know, by – well, international media, uh, let alone you know mainstream American corporate press. So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. Uh, and if you haven't already, uh, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.